So the first point on the agenda where we usually don't have anything is questions and issues. Anyone has anything what's not on the agenda that you want to raise? If not, then uh, we can move to the open PRs and uh, issues. Uh, I think I added two issues here. So this one, that's just a reminder that that needs a review from maintainers. So someone please have a look at it. Uh, otherwise, I don't think there's any special problem about it. Uh, and then this one that was changed to the resources in the topic operator. However, it's a done to the wrong file because it's to the install and not to the packaging. And uh, it also doesn't contain any real explanation about why exactly these resources should be the resources. I know that at the startup, the topic operator does all kind of uh, thread blocked exceptions and so on, but normally that works at least when deployed with Kafka. But in general, I don't think the problem is increasing the resources, but the problem is properly knowing what they should be increased to and not having some random number. So what should we do with this PR? And by the way, the last communication here was a month ago. Should we close it? Can we ping this guy and wait uh, one more week, for example? Well, ping him about what really? About uh, explanation of these values. Well, I, if you read the conversation, I don't think he has an explanation really. Okay. In that case, I think we can fold. Anyone else, anything? Okay. Then I guess we should close it. Anyone has any other PRs they want to raise or discuss? Okay, if not, then just as a reminder, there's a bunch of open proposals. There, uh, is a proposal about uh, the CA abstraction, which is still open uh, from Tom. So if anyone has some more comments to it, please review it and let him know. There's also uh, the proposal from Kate about uh, Connect API TLS support, but there we discussed that we should wait until the main CA proposal is uh, decided and approved and then we should based on that choose a similar approach. So, so that's kind of waiting. Then I open two new proposals. One is about 
the, about the defaulting to the restricted pod security profile uh, in in Kubernetes. So that's something what needs review so far. Only Tom seemed to have commented there. And then there's another proposal which I opened, which is about uh, deprecating uh, Mirror Maker 2 extensions. So Mirror Maker 2 extensions is where we have the identity replication policy, which is now in Kafka as well. So I don't think we should really keep maintaining our own version of that. Uh, we should really just migrate everyone to the Kafka one and archive our own. So that's still in the review process as well. Anyone has anything to proposals? Now, just want to say that, uh, yeah, I was busy. So uh, they are all on my to-do list. Uh, I will try to review all of them by the end of this week, or at least, yeah, at the beginning of the next one, for sure. Uh, yeah, even because the CA abstraction needs to move forward. It's one of the main proposals, I guess. So yeah, it ju just because I was busy and I had no time to review all of them right now. Okay. So the next thing on the agenda is uh, your question on Slack about uh, new releases uh, of uh, streams and bridge, which would bring the, which would release the last log4j version, the 2.17.1. There is also, if we do batch release, what we can include there, there's also a bump in the Fabric 8 version. And uh, there's also the fix Shuam have done to the Helm chart to setting the environment variable. So we can include that as well. So I guess the question is if everyone is fine to do the another round of the batch releases. The Elm chart is just for the operator, right? Yeah, yeah. The uh, the only thing here which is for the bridge is the log4j. Ah, okay, so no fabricate neither. Okay. Yeah, that's that's also only in the operator. Yeah, I I'm think fine. It should be fairly straightforward. So. Yeah, I'm fine. If you want, I can take care of the bridge release. Yeah. Okay. That would be good. Then if you can do the bridge, then yeah, I can do the RC of the operators afterwards over the weekend or something like that. Any questions or comments to this? If not, then I guess over to Paolo for the Swagger 2 markup. Yeah, I can start about it. Then I can even hand over to Shubham about this uh, uh, investigation. So the problem that we have today uh, is that, um, uh, yeah, we are building the documentation of the StreamZ project using this project, which is a Swagger 2 markup. Uh, so this is for generating uh, the open API documentation only. Uh, so from the YAML file able to produce the corresponding markdown that we use in our talk. Uh, the problem is that a uh, long time ago, I guess, um, I found a bug. So we have some examples that are not generated in the right way. So the JSON is kind of uh, wrong, or at least there are uh some brackets and there is a tag that it's not in the in a real response of the of the um the bridge and it is not because a problem in the bridge but this is this is because a um issue in the bugger to markup 
Uh, I fixed that, but uh, yeah, as you can see here, this project seems to be not maintained anymore. The last release was in April, 2018. Uh, I also pinged um, the, if you, yeah, even if you click on the, um, yeah, ex exactly. Uh, that was a kind of discussion with the maintainer. It was me asking uh, if it was maintained and he said that he has no time to work on it. And at some point uh, he uh, proposed to the people to join Slack, uh, even if I really didn't found the Slack channel for this project in order to ask for uh, rights, for permissions, uh, to be a kind of maintainer of the project. Uh, and then uh, yeah, be able to at least branching uh, for a new release with our fix because there is a big change going on about uh, supporting OpenAPI version 3 that should be in the 2.0 release of this library while what we need today is just a new release for 1.3 or 1.4, something like that. So at this point, uh, we have to make a choice um the first one is uh if we want to yeah it seems to be a gitter not a slack because you mentioned slack oh yeah there is even my conversation there so totally forgot it's kind of two two years ago uh so we should make a kind of decision here i guess uh because there is even another issue from liam that was raised somewhere if we want to try to ping again at this point the maintainer and uh, really joining the Gitter discussion and asking if we can get some committership, maintainership to be able at least to do uh, the next release uh, where we have this fix or at least having the power for future fixes and future releases. Um, to be honest, I don't know right now uh, how the pipeline for releasing is, is set up here. Uh, so how the release work in this project, I didn't dig into it. Um, or the second one could be forking this project under StreamZ. Yeah, so it seems to use Travis. Or if um, we want to fork under StreamZ, so it means that uh, we have to take care of everything on our side, setting up the pipeline, maybe at this point, not using Travis, but something different like Azure, because we we are using the CNCF support for this. And uh, or there was uh, an investigation uh, from Shubham uh, about uh, using a different tool, uh, which is Redoc. Uh, maybe Shubham can explain better, but the, the, the gist of it is that uh, this Redoc tool is based on Node.js. It doesn't produce Markdown but HTML. So it means that first we have to change our pipeline uh, using this new tool. So not a Maven plugin as for the Swagger to markup, but we have to install Node.js in the pipeline and even locally when we want to build the documentation locally. And then we have to change the way we integrate in the documentation because it's not Markdown, it's HTML. So maybe it will be more uh, troubles than uh, advantages. Uh, even the fact that uh, it's not JS, so we don't know how much experience the others, at least not me for sure, have on JavaScript if we want to fix something on this Redoc or providing PR on the project. Uh, and to be honest, yeah, we can ask Shubham, I don't know how active is this Redoc in terms of community or uh, uh, releases and things like that. So we have these two, three, three ways. Uh, try to ping again, so make another uh, attempt to, um, to get permissions on the project from the maintainer, from the main maintainer, or fork, or changing the Red Oak. And to be honest, uh, this is the order that I like to try uh, exactly. So I don't know, Shubham, if you want to add something more on your investigation on Red Oak before we try. Yeah, like uh, yesterday also, I was searching some like as searching for an alternative rather than using red oak like which might be using like maybe you we can use some maven plugin for the tool but probably the tools which i have found or seen are more, mostly written in like maybe html etc css javascript etc or maybe 
there was one go tool also like i guess uh, we can use go to install it then use it so i i was able to see that also but at, like the problem is the same that if we use any other tool they are using these things either you have to go with node and if we are using like making use of that go tool then we will have to like we, we should have go on our machines installed so like it is the same thing like i guess well go tools are usually distributed as a binaries right so it's not like installing node yeah so so that that is the thing that uh whichever way we go either if we go with node or maybe go it might be a bit troublesome so like i, I personally like your flow the, the the order you told paulo like first we can do with the pinging part then forking and maybe the last but we have to make yeah, a choice i don't think the forking is as straightforward as it sounds because you will need to change the project to use our own domain and you will need to build the whole ci for it so it's fairly a lot of work so i think it's probably worth to investigate uh, this path and uh, yeah try to get the permissions because that will be much less effort than if we fork it yeah because i agree then you would need to change the code and you would need to build the whole release pipeline which can easily take a day or more depending on how much experience you have with it so yeah i think we should first try this before before forking it yeah exactly that was because i i ordered uh the yeah, the topics in the in my preferred way so first thinking second forking and finally change project i have a i have another suggestion i don't know if this is would be any any use um that we I don't, uh, it's it's the, we're talking about small changes that we're missing in the build isn't it so is it, is it possible that we can post build we can just make those changes manually and then push the html back up You I'm just, I just, that, you can't do that in the CI, really. I'm, uh, I'm talking about the what, so the HTML that we build, can we change the HTML and then push it back up again? No, yeah, but what will you do? Will you change it after every commit to the main? Well, that, that's my next, uh, that's my next question, actually. How, how stable are we here? How many, t uh, how often will it be? updated well i i guess that for every build we are re rebuilding the doc right so it will be yeah all the changes that you made in the previous build will be overridden by the new build yeah. and then you have to change again yeah can, can we is, is it possible to turn it off for, for uh, why why we're not changing Well, it is possible to turn it off, but you then lose the advantage of having the documentation auto-generated, right? Right. Okay. So that's that's not really an option then. Okay. Just as just a suggestion. I was just wondering uh, if if it's pretty pretty stable and that there are not going to be uh, a lot of changes to it, whether we need to continually build it anyway. But okay. So any other opinion on this or the other things that we can try to pursue this, uh, this path? If that's okay, I will try to ping the, the, the maintainer again. It seems that uh, he engaged with me this morning when I tweeted about the coffee that I was taking before joining the Streamity community meeting. It should be exactly the maintainer of this project. So. Maybe I will uh, engage with him <laughs> this morning because of that, uh, talking about the status of the project and if we can get some maintainership or permissions to do a release at least. Okay, sounds like a plan.
Okay, I guess that brings us to the end of the agenda. Does anyone have any other topics to raise? If not, then I guess thanks for joining and uh, that's it for today. Thanks very much. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. See you. Bye.